Hey, what's up, guys? This is Cody the Corn Raptor coming at you with another Bitcoin episode. And in today's episode, I want to talk about the massive supply shock that's going to be coming to Bitcoin in the near future. But before we get to that, be sure to subscribe, be sure to hit that like button, and be sure to follow me on Threads and X. So first, I'm going to start here with my TA. So Bitcoin has been actually up over the past couple of days, despite the fact that we've had a red day today. But what I'm looking at right now for Bitcoin is at about uh, support at 65 and a half for that to hold. And as long as this support holds, I think that it's very possible we can make another run up to about 60 for uh, 700, this resistance line right here. So the returns for October have been a little muted. If we go ahead and take a look at our Bitcoin returns history, I want you guys to focus, though, on the quarterly returns for Bitcoin. So the quarterly returns have been very, very strong for uh, Q3 and for Q4. So we're actually going to be going in here to uh, Q4. And Q4 has absolutely fantastic gains for Bitcoin. On average, 81%. The median is about 31% or so. But if we take a look at our monthly returns, we can see here that October is actually so far negative on the month. And that's kind of normal for October. Sometimes it takes a little while for October to really push into gear and for Pumptober to happen. And then, uh, and if it honestly, if it doesn't happen in October, I do expect that November is going to be a very, very strong month for Bitcoin. And I think it's also possible we'll get a strong month in December as well. So the whole reason why I think that we're going to see some explosive price action is not only because uh, of institutional adoption, but also because of the impending supply destruction, Armageddon, the supply shock that's going to be going through the Bitcoin markets. And we've seen a massive amount of adoption just in the past year or so. We've had the Bitcoin spot ETFs. We've had options ETFs uh, being approved. Actually, that, that happened uh, recently. Uh, the SEC approved Bit BlackRock spot Bitcoin ETF options listing. That happened uh, about last month. So that's one example of the adoption. But not only do you have that, but you also have things like the SEC commissioner, uh, Mark Uida saying that uh, their approach towards uh, crypto has frankly been inadequate. It's fueled disaster for the whole industry. In fact, he's come down here and he said, the, this is an SEC commissioner, I think our policies and approach over the last several years have really just been a disaster for the whole industry. All right, we have been sending this policy through enforcement. We've done nothing to provide guidance on it. As, as a result, this has been achieved by the courts, and different courts have ruled different ways. All right, so if you follow this channel, you know the way the SEC has been, has been regulating Bitcoin and cryptocurrency has been terrible. The policy through enforcement, all these lawsuits against Circle and against Coinbase and Crypto.com, it's been terrible. Uh, and, and quite frankly, the rules have been muddied. It's difficult for the, the crypto industry to thrive and for adoption to continue as long as the SEC continues with this policy. But we have a major election coming up, and it's very possible that the new candidate who will be elected president will choose a new SEC head. It's very possible we'll wind up getting different direction uh, coming up for next year, and that's part of it. The other thing is the increased adoption through things like uh, BlackRock, one of the largest financial institutions and managers of money. BlackRock had a, the uh, their recent third uh, quarter earnings report. And Larry Fink, the CEO of BlackRock, had something very interesting to say on the conference call. And so I, I brought it up here at Motley Fool, the transcript of the conference call. He specifically talks about Bitcoin being an asset. He says, we believe Bitcoin is an asset class in itself. It is an alternative to the commodities like gold. And so I think the application of this form of investment will be expanded to the role of the Ethereum as a blockchain can grow dramatically. Okay, so what he's saying here is it's an alternative to gold, all right? That has always been a founding principle of the Bitcoin blockchain. And one of the founding reasons why people buy and hold Bitcoin is because they believe it is a digital gold, an alternative to gold. This is Larry Fink the CEO of BlackRock, one of the most prestigious financial institutions on the planet, saying Bitcoin is an alternative to gold, all right? And this right here, this is the start of an avalanche. I believe an 
avalanche that we're going to see of adoption throughout the financial services market. He also sees, uh, he also says that how do we see in this in a country the role of digitizing the dollar? Digitizing the dollar and what role does that play? It's a very different question related to like, let's say, Bitcoin and other items like that, but all of that's going to be under discussion, all right? So he here, what he's saying is that the digitalization of the dollar is going to be coming. Now, how they actually do that, who knows? But Bitcoin may have a strong role to play in the digitization of the dollar. This right here, this is gold. This quote is fantastic. And quite frankly, if the dollar gets digitalized then it's possible that Bitcoin will be used in some manner uh, of, of, of digitizing the dollar, either as a, a backup or a reserve, or maybe even it would operate on the blockchain itself. Who knows? This is really important, folks. And this is one of the reasons why we're going to see a huge supply shock in the near term. Now, if you go ahead and take a look at our so-so value Bitcoin spot ETFs, this is the weekly for the inflows and outflows for Bitcoin spot ETFs, we can see here that it's actually been pretty steady. Now, it's important to realize the fact that this only this takes into account the Bitcoin price, and uh, we're going to put this in here. And you can see as, as the Bitcoin price has kind of been downtrending, it hasn't really done a lot. We haven't seen it reach all-time highs. But at the same time, we've seen this total net assets stay pretty even. It's kind of it's gone down to about 49 billion. It's gone all the way up to about 60 billion, but it stayed pretty much even. And the reason why that's important is because with these institutional investors who are going and buying Bitcoin spot ETFs, they are showing that they are just going to stay invested for the most part when it comes to Bitcoin, and they're not going to go and panic sell or or or, or maybe even FOMO buy. Bitcoin. And this is really important to establish Bitcoin's uh, credibility as an alternative asset. So I think that the supply shock is going to boost these numbers. We're finally going to see Bitcoin go over the, the hump of $60 billion once we see this supply shock happen either later this year or next year. Uh, that'd be my expectation. And you're going to get those FOMO buyers that come in and they say, I want part of this as part of my portfolio, one or two percent, maybe three, four, five percent, possibly. They want it. And the easiest way for them to get exposure to Bitcoin is to buy Bitcoin on these spot ETFs. Now, I also want to go ahead and talk about the short term versus the long term supply. OK, so this is another reason why we're going to see a large supply shock in the near future. So this gives us an idea of the short term holder supply and the long term holder supply. The long term holder supply here is in blue, and you can see that it kind of peaked out here at about 85 percent or so. So. This was back in December of 2023. Since then, I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. We can see that uh, it's actually come down to about 78% and then back up to where it is right now at about 84-ish percent. All right, so the reason why this is important is because as the demand for Bitcoin picks up and as more institutions are interested in buying Bitcoin, these long-term holders are going to be less likely to sell their Bitcoin until at least it gets close to the next bull market top. If we see the behavior of these investors, of these long-term holders, they tend to hold on to their Bitcoin up until uh, around the top. So you can see here in 2020, we see it went up to about 78% or so of long-term holder supply. And then as the pl as the, the price went up here at about 60K, it went, the long-term holder supply went down. Okay. So the long-term holders are going to hold Bitcoin for the long term and they are committed buyers. And this is important because they will hold, they're not going to sell. And as a result, you're not going to get as much supply on the market. In fact, if we take a look at our exchange reserves, we can see that uh, backing it all out to 2022, this huge, huge decrease in the number of Bitcoin on exchanges. Now we're sitting at about two and a half million Bitcoin on exchanges when we started with about 3.2 million Bitcoin on exchanges back in 2021. This number is going to continue to decrease because demand for Bitcoin is going to pick up. And as the supply and available Bitcoin decreases, when the demand increases, then you get a price increase as well. 
Now, another way of looking at this is the Bitcoin new supply. I have here at the simple moving average of about 100 or so. Uh, and so this is a 100-day simple moving average. You can see here that this is the new supply coming out of the market. It's around 900 or so up until we hit the halving. And when you hit the halving, it goes all the way down here to, well, cut in half, 450 or so. So this is another big reason why we've seen such a large amount of Bitcoin leave exchanges. So if you, if you look at this, as soon as you hit April, it goes down drastically. As soon as you hit April, we get that halving happen, and you just have less Bitcoin coming onto the market. And as a result, we've seen the Bitcoin price spike. I mean, just look at that. Look at look at how look at how high Bitcoin was coming into this year, uh, forty one thousand, and then now we've seen it kind of go up to about seventy ish, seventy two. So I do think that we're going to wind up seeing a huge supply shock in the Bitcoin price. And this will lead to a new all-time high. I believe a new all-time high by the end of the year. Now, next year, I think what's possible is we could actually see Bitcoin as high as maybe even about 100K. We could actually finally get to 100K Bitcoin. I think that's definitely very possible. But you want to position yourself in a way to take advantage of this. I have already. I've got my Bitcoin. I've got a full position built out. And I am not planning on selling any of it until we get close to the next Bitcoin bull market top. And I'm going to be paying attention to this. And if you guys are interested, leave a like, leave a, leave a uh, subscribe to the channel, and then I will do my best to call out the Bitcoin bull market top when that happens. And I'll also be sharing my journey, my Bitcoin journey and my crypto journey as well. So if you guys are interested in hearing about that, definitely subscribe. I appreciate you for making it through this video. Let me know what you guys are doing in the comments below and I'll catch you guys in the next video.